All right, we got to get going right here because I don't, I don't think I can finish this today, so I'll, kind of, I'll watch the clock, I promise. And I want us to get into the Word of God and allow God to just continue to teach us a few things this morning. And I'll explain it a little more in depth now. As I'm talking, start turning to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Now normally I ask you to hold up your Bible. I want to see all the Bibles. If we had a camera besides just the one that uh, is back there, I would want them to pan on the front row to my right to see all the phones with all the and the and the tablets but but y'all it's kind of normal for y'all youngins we're talking gray hair folk and they have been so educated <laughs> that they know how to run those things called a telephone well besides Morris and Ed and all those Jerry Oh, Ed, even Ed, Ed, Ed's even got a phone in his hand. My Lord. Now, Morris don't have anything because he can't see or hear. I'm just kidding, huh? Morris has been with us for 20 years. He's one of the oldest members of the church with Betsy and, and uh, a few of the others. Honored to have you guys. So I like to harass Morris just a little bit. He's my buddy. Last week we talked about um, the understanding that we have dominion over sin. Just for you new people or anybody that wasn't here last week, just a little catch up. You have to understand there's one scripture that a lot of people use as justification to sin. And obviously it's, it's the one that's, that's found in, in Hebrews that talks about how we all fall short of the glory of God. And a lot of times we use that as, as an excuse of, uh, to sin. You know, well, brother, we all fall short of the glory of God. Well, last week, biblically, we... We learned that sin has no dominion over a believer. And so we have to remember that when you gave your life to Jesus, you were translated, moved in other words, from the nature of sin to the nature of the kingdom of God through Jesus who is the light. So we've got darkness on one side, we've got light on the other. Both of them are in this world. You can live in darkness or you can live in the light. A believer in Jesus obviously doesn't live in the nature of sin any longer, the before Christ. We live in a new kingdom, the kingdom of God, through Jesus. You have to understand that, y'all, or, or it's going to really mess you up living in a world that is full of sin, but not living of it, right? Um, obviously, I don't have time to teach about when Adam and Eve sinned. Satan was kicked out of heaven, remember, for rebelling all his demons that that tried to make him God, were kicked out of heaven as well. They resided here on earth. Adam and Eve was born, and then the devil, Satan, he tempted them and they fell. Right then it started the nature of sin, rebellion. And then we know progression. Jesus, we just remembered it through communion. Jesus was crucified, sent God's only begotten Son, that if we had just believed on Him, we wouldn't perish, but we would rather have everlasting life, okay? 
right then when Jesus was raised from the dead, I mean, things ooh, changed. Oh, to the, to the glory of God for us believers. Because we don't now operate, remember last week, we don't operate by law. We operate through grace, mercy, forgiveness, etc. But using that one scripture, we all fall short of the glory of God. To sin is not correct. Because then we justify sin. And we learned last week that you and I have dominion over sin. We can say yes to it. We can also say no to it. If we say yes to it, yes. We're under grace, mercy, forgiveness. Back in the day, remember, back in the day of the law, before Jesus came, crucified, raised from the dead, if you sinned, you died. Remember, the priest would have to, they'd have to tie a rope around his leg or some part of his body. When he took your sin into the holy of holies, if he had any sin, he was human, by the way, right? Then he would drop dead and they'd have to pull him out or just under the glory of God. So we've got to understand, y'all, that we have dominion over sin, Thank God for that, because then it doesn't have to rule us. Now, we may have challenges in some area, but thank God we have victory through Jesus. And we can overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony, you see. So, we have to establish that as a believer. We were, before we gave our life to Jesus, in the sinful world, the nature of sin unrighteousness, but when we gave our life to Jesus, and I pray to God that everybody in this crowd and everybody watching has given their heart to Jesus. If you have not, you will today. I mean, what's stopping you? We have to have Jesus because without Jesus, whoo, it's going to be a tough life because you're going to live in the nature of sin. But Jesus, being on the inside of you because he's the Lord of your life, has given you bountifully a lot of victory, a lot of, of uh, the greatness of him, redemption, all the great benefits of Jesus dying, he's given it to you as a believer. And we don't have to be bogged down by being captive to sin. And then we don't have to justify it. Well, you know, brother, we all fall short of the glory of God. And you do before, before Jesus, but not with Jesus living on the inside of you. Okay? So, this is really good news. Because then if you're struggling in an area of addiction, or whatever it might be, you have got something available to you that a non-believer doesn't. Which is the power Matter of fact, the Bible calls that one word power, a Greek word called dunamis. You've got dunamis power on the inside of you to say no to sin. And it doesn't have to rule you not another day in your life, but we've just been conditioned even as believers in Jesus. That you know, brother, we all fall short of the glory. If you do fall short, thank God for grace and mercy and forgiveness. I mean, thank God for it in college. Woo! I mean, I was born again, but man, for two years, as y'all know probably, I walked away from the Lord. The party was at my house. But that was my fault. Not God saying, well, you know, it's just part of life. You just all fall short of the glory of God. We've got to start being taught this stuff so that we can actually have victory over sin. Now, now, I'm reminded of something. I want you to hold your place in Romans chapter 8, and I want you to turn back to your left, to Ephesians. I'm sorry, to your right, to Ephesians, and let's go to chapter 4 real fast. 
Because what we're doing today is just, we're going to help us understand. From last week's message, we understand that, you know, there's no justification of sin because Jesus overcame it. And now he lives on the inside of us, which means we don't have to be um, controlled by the nature of sin because we don't live in that world as a believer in Jesus. We live in the kingdom of God. That's why we come to church. That's why we live by the manual, the Word of God, you see. Um, and then we can have victory over areas that we struggle in, you see. If it's alcohol, not a problem. Jesus, he, he, he died, raised from the dead so that you can overcome that spirit of alcoholism. If it's drugs, not a problem. Even though that sin, when you're addicted to those kind of things and doing something that's against the law, the Bible says we're to obey the laws of the land. Not a problem, though, because, because of Jesus that lives on the inside of you, you've got power over sin. You've just got to realize it, accept it, and know that because of your Jesus that lives on the inside of you, sin has no dominion over us that believe. That's why, that's why you can tell the devil, instead of being afraid of him, he ought to be afraid of you as a believer because of Jesus, the Spirit that lives on the inside of you. That's why you can say, devil, get thee behind me. You can tell the devil to get under your feet. You can rebuke him in Jesus' name. Don't do it in your own name. Do it in the name that's above all names. Do it in the name that the Bible says every demon has to flee in. Jesus. I'm telling you in these days, it is so confusing to live in this world. So that's why we don't live, need to live of it. Because it gets more confusing. We don't even, there's a whole lot of people. Let me get out from behind the podium real. There's a whole lot of people that don't even know what a woman is. Come on, don't throw tomatoes at me. All right, let me say it behind the podium. I ain't afraid to lose no 501c3 status. Ha, <laughs> yo mama. Why don't we just believe the word of God and have some boldness? We know what a woman is, right women? Y'all got a lot of authority and power. My wife, all she's got to do is look at our kids. What'd you say? And I mean, we move, right? We don't even know what marriage is supposed to be. Well, we do. It's just going to take some bold preachers. Because a lot of it is our preachers that have backed away. And they, they are afraid to offend anybody. Look, y'all, the Word of God offends if, if you don't understand that you're set apart. You don't live in the kingdom of the old nature of sin and death. You live in a brand new kingdom, the kingdom of God, through faith, through love, through mercy, through forgiveness, but not because of sin. And we just fall short of the glory of God. No, 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 no. I'm telling you, if we ever get a hold of the dunamis power that you and I live under as believers in Jesus... Whoo! That's when you speak to the mountain and command the mountain to be cast into the sea. Whatever the mountain might be in your life, I don't know. I know what it is in my life. But we've got the authority to speak to that mountain and command it to be cast in the sea. And then remember it says, don't doubt in your heart. Just believe the things that you say will come to pass. You'll have whatsoever you say. Now, don't get away from the Word of God like, well then, by golly, I, 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 I say and command a million dollars drop out of the air and hit me in the head. <laughs> well, it won't do that if you hadn't planted the seed. Okay. All right, look at Ephesians 
chapter 4, the Apostle Paul is, is preaching here, and he says, I therefore, verse 1, the prisoner of the Lord beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you're called. And every one of you believers are called to do something. You may not be called to be a, a five-fold minister that we'll talk about here in verse 11. But look at verse 2. With all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Unity. I would underline that if it was me. Verse 4 says, there is one body. He's trying to help us here as believers. One spirit, even as, as are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith. Y'all hearing it? One baptism, one God, and Father of all who is above all, through all, and in you all. There's not many gods. Now, if you live in the kingdom of the world through sin and death, do you know that believers can still live in the curse, in the world ways? Especially if they don't understand and get knowledge of the Word of God, who they are in Christ. Well, that's why we're, we're here today. We're trying to get more knowledge of who we are in Christ Jesus so that we can overcome any kind of sin. We can learn. Hold your finger. Hold your finger in verse 7 right there and back up to Romans chapter 5 real fast. Just back straight up. Go Romans chapter 5 and look at verse 1. Romans chapter 5, but, but hold on in Ephesians chapter 4 just for a second. And I know you've got your left hand on, on Rome, Romans chapter 8. And uh, now just flip the page and look at verse, see how I'm doing it? See? Look at verse 1 of chapter 5 of Romans. Therefore, being justified by faith. You know what that word justified, if you got the king, if the amplified version is, that's what I like. I try to teach everybody, uh, if you're members of this church, if you can, I would get the King James, something that has lasted the, the, the times, the oldest translation of the Word of God. I like it. I was raised on it. I got the King James on one side, but I've got a parallel Bible. You can go to the Christian bookstore and buy them, a parallel Bible, or a side-by-side. -side. On the right side is the Amplified. So if I don't understand the these, thous, and thuses, I can look at the Amplified. I like the Amplified version of verse 1, chapter 5. It says, therefore, since we are justified, and then it explains justified, acquitted, declared righteous, Declared righteous, did y'all get that? You're declared righteous, that's in right standing with God. And given a right, and given a declared righteous and given a right standing with God. Now, as a believer, that man, that's got to hit home to us. Because we're righteous. We're doing what's right. If we do things that are unrighteous, again... We live under grace and mercy, but there's no justification for sin. No, let's just do what's right because we're righteous. Let's stop. That's why you repent, right? As you turn away from that sin. And all we're doing this morning is we're learning that sin has no dominion over you and I as a believer. Okay, but, but look real fast. Go to verse 7 of, of Ephesians 4. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. If Jesus is Lord of your life, thank God for that gift. Wherefore he has said, verse 8, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive, gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it but he that also descended, he went to hell, it says it first into the lower parts of the earth. He went to hell so that we don't have to. But you remember, he had to experience everything, right? He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, 
that he might fill all things. Then he gave us some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and teachers. That's five. Five-fold. And by the way, there's, there's a few denominations that don't think we have the apostle and the prophet anymore. Huh. Why? Matter of fact, on uh, September 24th, the prophet, um, Scott Windrum, is going to be here. I'm telling you, there's still prophets. There's still all five of them doing the work of the ministry. But look, all five of them, so he's not going to just take two of them out, you see. No, they're, they're all five for a specific reason. And it tells us in verse 12, for the perfecting of the saints. Look at me real fast. If you're born again, you're the saints. Now, you're all, you're, you're, a saint is a son or a daughter of the Most High God. But when it says the saints, it's talking about all of us that, are, that have Jesus as Lord. Okay? Look what it says, though. It goes on to say, for the perfecting of the saints, for what? Say it out loud. Say it a little bit louder, or... Can y'all can for the work of the ministry? So my job as a pastor of this church is to teach you the saints to do the work of the ministry. What is that? Well, exactly what we're doing, that sin doesn't have dominion over you and you can operate in the kingdom of God because you're righteous, you're made righteous. Again, if you make a mistake, it's covered under the blood under mercy, under grace, but that's not the justification to do something wrong. It's just to understand that government. i got to continue to stay in the Spirit. We're going to read that probably next week. We've got to stay in the Spirit because we've got to do the work of the ministry. In other words, I don't have time to go and lay hands on the hundreds of people in the hospitals, sometimes more in your congregations. But I'm supposed to teach you to do that. You, can, you don't have to be a preacher to go lay hands on the sick. You just got to know who you are in Christ Jesus. If you know who you are in Christ Jesus, I didn't say you had to know all the scriptures of the Bible. I didn't say you have to pray a certain amount of time every day. I'm just saying if Jesus is the Lord of your life, you can go to your friend and say, hey, let me pray for you. Maybe you don't know exactly what to say, but God knows. All you got to say is, Father, just, just bless, bless him, heal him in Jesus' name. Amen. You don't have to have perfect prayer. No, all you got to do is just do the work of the ministry. If someone's dying and sick in the hospital, why don't you go speak life to them? Hey, come on, get up in Jesus' name. Come on, you can do it. You don't have to die. I speak life over you and not death in Jesus' name. That's very simple to say. That's doing the work of the ministry. Hey, you're the head and not the tail. You're above and not beneath. You can do all things through Christ which strengthen, strengthens you. You can do it, brother. Come on, sister, get up. You know, because people are down a lot in the world system, but that's why we've got to continually Remind people that we don't live in the world system if you're born again. That's why I continue to travel out of these, this church and evangelize. Because I want people to go to heaven, number one. I don't want them to die and go to hell. But I want to give them some hope. And the only hope in this world is not in our government. Let me stand on the chair for that one. <laughs> You see my balance? <laughs> Let me get off of it for a second. <laughs> Use some wisdom. <laughs> That's part of the kingdom, man. No, 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 no. It's, it's not found in the stock market. It's not found in other ways of making finances. No, God's our provider. And we, when we share the hope, that's the work of the ministry. All I'm trying to do is convince all of us that we are in a different kingdom. All you got to do is say, you're right. All you got to do is, is 
not have a mindset, well, I just want to get saved, put on the helmet of salvation because I, I don't want to go to hell, I want to go to heaven. And then live in a world with no protection other than the helmet of salvation. That's a good start. But it's deeper than that. It's way deeper. You are living in a different kingdom. Man, we don't get preached this stuff because we just want to feel a little bit better when we leave the church. Instead of having the understanding that, that sin has no dominion over you, man. You've got dominion over it. Through Jesus. All right. Wow. Don't miss next week and the week after. And the week after, maybe. I think I'm here for a while. Right? When am I gone, Ricky? Mama, when am I gone? You should know. It don't matter. So if she don't know that I'm here for a while. Okay. In October, maybe. At the end of October. When I have to be, I, I'm going to preach in Uvalde. You're going to preach in San Angelo. Huh? Gail. The 20th. What day's the 20th of October? That's... Okay, so, but it doesn't matter, y'all. I'm going to be here for a few Sundays. So don't miss, because we, we've got to get set free, y'all, that sin doesn't have dominion over us. Now, I, I, and I didn't get to it, golly. But next week, you're going to find out that there's no condemnation in Christ. So just because you make a mistake, we don't live in condemnation in Christ Jesus, but outside of Christ... There's condemnation for those unbelievers. That's why we love them. And we want them to give their hearts to Jesus, see. So, again, don't miss next week. Because we're going to really jump. I'm going to finish Ephesians. But then we're going to really jump into Romans chapter 8. Um, and it's going to get better and better. And what it's going to do, y'all, is regardless of... I don't care if you just got saved last week or here in just a minute. Um, it's time we grow up a little faster. I mean, you're going to get the meat of the Word of God. You don't have to be on the milk for a long period of time. God, I think, is accelerating our spiritual lives because we're going to get a hold of this stuff so that we can live in victory out in a world but not of it. Because, I mean, we're going to live around it, y'all. But are you going to get bogged down because you heard one news item of something negative? No, I'd probably just turn off the TV. Amen. But we're still gonna we're gonna still see gas prices. We're gonna still buy some eggs unless you got three chickens like at my house, and that's all we got. The dog killed the fourth one. That, I mean, mean dog too. That little weenie dog. That's, I could. I was like, y'all me tell you how it happened? No, I'm kidding. Father, it is a privilege. It's a privilege to be called your son and your daughter. And it doesn't matter how much knowledge someone has of the Bible or trying to still understand Christianity. But once they find out who they are, wow operating in, in the love that you have for us, not condemnation, not guilt, but, Father, just learning how to live in your kingdom like heaven. That's why, sir, you, you taught us how to pray, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom, thy kingdom, sir. You kept emphasizing kingdom. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done right here on earth like heaven. So, Father, we need, we need the knowledge on the kingdom that, that we can live by on this earth just like heaven. And there's, there's nothing but peace in heaven. Matter of fact, the Prince of Peace is there, sir. Jesus. Seated at the right hand, your word says. Our word says. 
So, Father, continue to help us learn who we are, not without Christ, but in Christ Jesus. Every head bowed and every eye closed. I'll say amen here in just a second, but I want to I want to talk to anybody that's at the sound of my voice, either in this auditorium or watching. I want, to, I want to present a question. Most of you know the question. What would happen to you if you left this earth, you died of this flesh, and you stood before God Almighty, and the Bible's really true? What would happen to you? Well, number one... We all, according to the Bible, the Bible calls it the great judgment day. We're all, all of us, individually, we're going to stand before God one day. If Jesus is the Lord of your life, that's John 3, 16, y'all. We already quoted it. If he's the Lord of your life and you've confessed him as Lord, Romans 10 and 9, When you stand before God with Jesus as the Lord of your life, God will say, Well done, thou good, faithful servant. And come on in or enter into the place called heaven. The joy of the Lord, the rest. R-E-S-T. That's what I want Him to say to everybody that is listening in this church or watching. I want him to say, I want him to say, well done, come on into heaven. But he cannot say that without Jesus being your Lord. Jesus, remember John 14? He's the only way, truth, and life. The only way to get to the Father in heaven through Jesus. If you choose with the will that God gave all of us to say no to this Christianity, this God stuff. You have that right, by the way. God's so cool. He doesn't force anything on you. He wants you to have it. And I'm telling you, there's only one hope, as we just saw in Ephesians, and it's through our God. But if you choose not to have any relationship with God, You don't believe in any of it. When you stand before God, and you will, He'll have to say, depart from me. That's why there's a place called hell. God didn't make it for believers or for even the human race until Adam and Eve sinned. But, praise God, Jesus was was sent so that we can choose Him. But if you don't, There's a place called hell. But I want people to go to the other place called heaven. So if you're here this morning at the sound of my voice, you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life. You don't know what would happen to you if you died and stood before God. You don't know what he would say. Then I want you to receive Jesus right now. What I'm going to do, and we do it every service of this church, is I'm going to lead you in Romans 10 and 9. It just simply says, if you'll confess with your mouth, that means you've got to speak it out loud, that Jesus is Lord, we'll invite Him to come into our life and save us. And then believe that God raised Him from the dead. The Bible says in the King James, Thou shalt be saved. Saved from that place called hell, but also saved from living on this earth without hope. You'll have it. You'll have Jesus. You'll have the Word of God. You'll learn from a church that is Bible-believing, hopefully. And if this is the church for you, then plug into it. But if not, you need to find a good Bible-believing church that can feed you, teach you. So if you're here this morning and you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, you don't know what would happen to you if you died and stood before God, then I want you to pray a prayer with me. All the believers in here, y'all know, I want you to pray this prayer with someone around you that could be praying it for the very first time. But also, as you know, you need to learn 
how to lead people to Jesus. So if you pray this prayer and you learn it, then you can lead others to Jesus that won't come to any church. But God will open that door, I'm telling you, with your influence. So if you've never received Jesus, pray this prayer, please. And let's, let's invite Him into our life if we've never have, or we may be praying it with someone around us. You ready? Out of your mouth, and I'm talking to anybody that just doesn't know, and, and Jesus is not your Lord. Make Him your Lord right now by praying this prayer. Out of your mouth, say, Father in heaven, I open the door of my heart. I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is my Lord. Jesus, come into my life. Come into my heart. Save me. Forgive me of my sins. Thank you, Lord, that I believe that you have been raised from the dead. And today I'm saved. Come into heaven when I leave this earth. But while I live here on this earth, I need help. I can live like heaven. So teach me. I'm willing to learn. In Jesus' name I pray. With every head bowed and every eye closed, if you just prayed that prayer for the very first time and you gave your heart to Jesus, you meant that prayer. All I want you to do at the count of three is be bold enough to say, hey, I just gave my heart to Jesus. I meant that prayer. I just did it for the first time this morning. Now Jesus is my Lord. If that was you and you prayed that prayer in a minute and you gave your heart to Jesus this morning, then get that hand straight up when I count three. One, two, three. And then just put it right back down. You ready? And I want you to do that because there's a scripture that says if you'll confess Jesus before men, Jesus says I'll confess you before my Father. In other words, don't ever be ashamed that Jesus is now your Lord. If you just prayed that prayer, get that hand up at the count of three with boldness. One, two, three. Go. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Just raise that hand up if you hadn't already. We gave one Bible out, maybe two. Let me see that hand if, if you hadn't already. Glory be to God. All right, look at me. Thank God for people giving their heart to Jesus.